Grace to you and peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to Ash Wednesday Worship at the First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. Friends in Christ, every year at Easter, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Lent is a time to prepare for that celebration and to renew our life in the mystery of God's self-giving love for us. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we are not gathering in person this year, we will not include the tradition of imposing ashes on our foreheads. Yet we are still symbolizing tonight what the ashes stand for, which is the frailty and uncertainty of human life and penitence for our sin and the brokenness of this world. I invite you to take part in our Lenten devotional program, which will be offered online each Wednesday evening from March 9th through April 6th. And this year's devotional theme will be Journey of Faith, featuring personal reflections by participants from our congregation and from our online fellowship. You can take part in a live viewing of each devotional starting at 7 o'clock via Zoom, or you can watch a recording of the devotional later in the evenings on, on Wednesdays at your convenience. So please join us and remember that you can view these devotionals anytime after they're made available on our website at warmprez.org. Tonight's liturgist is Vicki. Our musical gifts are offered by Kathy Worth Volgus on organ and piano and by our senior choir conducted by our director of music, Dave Sathra. Our worship begins with the prelude.
God sent Christ into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God's love endures forever. Amen. Before turning to scripture, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Tonight I will be reading the Litany of Confession, which is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise.
I will be reading from Isaiah 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. In Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is that, is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them? and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. Our gospel lesson is from the sixth chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 8 and 16 through 21. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume 
and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Amen. So how good is your aim? How often do you hit the bullseye of every target that you aim for? How often do you completely miss the target? When it comes to most activities, especially physical activity, my aim is not so great. Just ask our youth whenever they see me try to get a basketball through the hoop. And I'm terrible at bowling unless gutter balls count for something. And the one and only and probably last time that I attended an axe throwing party with some of the young adults from my previous church, I knew that I would not hit the bullseye with that axe. And I was right. I have come to accept my terrible aim. So why bring up basketball and bowling and hatchet throwing on Ash Wednesday? What does hitting the bullseye or knocking over all the pins or swishing the net have to do with what this night reminds us about ourselves and about our God? Well, I find it helpful to use the analogy of hitting the bullseye or making the perfect score because the word sin in the original languages of the Old and New Testament conveys the idea of our failing to hit a target. Scripture borrows from the vocabulary of archery to describe humanity's chronic failure to do God's will, to obey God's law, and to fulfill that two-sided commandment to love God and to love neighbor. And that sense of missing the target reminds us that sin is not just the bad things that we do on purpose. Sin also means that even with the best of intentions to aim our lives directly at pleasing the Lord, we will always miss the mark if we are aiming only by our own strength. And one example of what that looks like is from the passage we heard tonight from Isaiah. These words that God speaks through Isaiah are delivered to a people who are trying their best to offer obedience to the Lord. They want to get it right. They want to hit the target. They spend hours upon hours praying, fasting, making offerings, keeping Sabbath. They follow all the rules of proper worship. Yet, None of what they are doing gives them any sense of God's presence or blessing. They raise their voices in praise, yet all they hear in return is a deafening silence. And they can't understand why all that obedience isn't yielding results. Why do we fast, but you do not see, they ask. Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Well, then God finally speaks through the prophet and tells them that in spite of their excellence in worship, their devotion, 
is incomplete. Their piety is flawed because they worship the Lord while neglecting the poor. They fast while withholding bread from the hungry. They bless their creator, but then turn around and strike their neighbor and quarrel with each other. And in Matthew's gospel, the word that Jesus uses for this dilemma is hypocrisy, which literally means below standard, which is just another way of saying missing the target. And that standard, that target, as Jesus tells us elsewhere in the Gospels, is that love of God and love of neighbor are not level one and level two of obedience. They are one and the same target. So tonight, let's receive these words from Jesus and Isaiah, not as an indictment, but as an invitation, an invitation to seek a deeper love for the Lord, but also a deeper love for others. You may or may not practice fasting during Lent, but you might want to take on a new practice that will bring you closer to the needs of others. Find a way to show compassion to an elderly neighbor, or donate to our deacons to help fund our food pantry, or give blood at our next blood drive here at the church on April 1st. Donate to a charity that will bring humanitarian aid to Ukrainian refugees who have been forced to flee their country to safety. Or simply give some time to help someone who isn't related to you or already a friend. And if fasting is a discipline that you value during Lent, try fasting from all those new sources that leave you feeling hopeless that anything can be done to alleviate poverty or homelessness or violence in our communities. Try fasting from whatever technology steals time away from your loved ones or for time to yourself to read a book or take a walk. Fast from whatever makes you throw up your hands and say that nothing you can do can make a difference because all that is, is sin holding you back. The traditional symbol of ashes on this first of 40 days of Lent reminds us how pervasive sin is in our lives and in the life of this world. It's daunting to consider how sin goes much deeper than our personal weakness, but that it can even corrupt the best of intentions. But what we most need to remember tonight is how we fail to hit the mark is not the only truth that we are telling at the beginning of this Lenten pilgrimage, because we are proclaiming an even deeper and more certain truth that we are the target of God's love. And the truth that God's aim is sure and never misses. So I invite you in the name of Christ to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by reading and meditating on the word of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, out of your love and mercy, you breathed into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and neighbors. 
Call forth our prayers and acts of tenderness and strengthen us to face our mortality that we may reach with confidence for your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord and to love and serve our neighbors. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Oh.